Minister, uh, growing public outrage uh, and international pressure has finally forced some moves towards having a minimum corporate effective tax rate to deal with the phenomena of aggressive tax avoidance by some of the wealthiest corporations in the world. And your government, although it resisted quite hotly, uh, has now agreed to a 15% effective uh, rate. My question is, will it actually be an effective rate? Because the 12.5% was not effective, you, and the, these companies utilise loopholes in the tax code to, to avoid paying their fair share of tax. On the 8th of October, Ireland joined 135 other member jurisdictions of the OECD framework in reaching a two-pillar agreement to address the tax challenges that have arisen from digitalisation. Pillar 1 will see a reallocation of a portion of the income of very large companies from source jurisdictions to market jurisdictions. Pillar 2 will introduce a global minimum effective tax rate of 15% on businesses with a global turnover of greater than €750 million. Euro. Um, it's important to note that 95% of the companies operating, outside, operating in Ireland excuse me, are outside of the scope of the agreement and will continue to be subject to a headline corporate tax rate of 12.5% on their trading profits. I do take further comfort from assurances from the European Commission that it plans to propose a faithful implementation of the OECD agreement within the European Union. As regards the suggestion that companies currently pay far less than the 12.5% headline rate, I'd like to remind the House of the published statistics of the Revenue Commissioner that show for the year 2019, which is the most recent period analysed, that companies paid an effective corporate tax rate of 10.3%, with foreign-owned multinationals paying an even higher rate. While this is below the headline rate of 12.5%, it's relatively close when compared to many of our competitors, and this close alignment of our headline and effective rates contributes to the tax certainty, which so many investors say is an important factor in choosing to locate operations here in Ireland. The figures you're referring to, and I have them in front of me, do not say what you just said. What they say for 2019 is that there was 195 billion worth of pre-tax profits before deductions and allowances, and that 10 billion was paid on that. That is not, uh, that's not 10% uh, or anything like it. It's 5.6%. The reason you can claim that it's 10% is because about 84 billion of their pre-tax profits are not taxed at all because they benefit from deductions, allowances and reliefs. And it is in that area that these companies have exploited loopholes in the tax code to write down their taxable profits. So they end up paying uh, tax on only about half of their actual profits, mostly through uh, intergroup transactions, paying themselves royalties uh, and paying for the use of patents from their own company, uh, which is a scam. Um, so my point is, how are we going to actually make them pay you, the effective rate? So I have the figures here in front of me as well, Deputy, and I'm sure I got them from the same place that you did. And you are correct in the sense that uh, 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 credits and deductions are used, uh, but that's not the same as tax avoidance. That's where we differ. A credit, for example, with regard to uh, recognising research and development is not tax avoidance. It is a legitimate way of a tax code recognising that something is happening inside our country that is valuable, that can create employment and create investment. And uh, uh, it's a common feature of uh, business and corporate tax policies all over the world. Uh, and the figures, I'm sure, from the same website and same publication that you have them, are very clear. Um, all companies had an effective tax rate of 10.3%, foreign old multinationals 11.1%, US owned multinationals 11.5%. The allowances that they use, and by the way, I want to preempt what will probably be your last comment by saying, I think we, 
value the jobs from these companies that, that they bring to this country. Uh, they do create employment, and we want those jobs here. That doesn't mean they can't bear their fair share of tax. But the major reliefs and allowances they benefit from are intra-group transactions worth 16 billion in the year 2019 as a cost to the exchequer, also from revenue figures, uh, and from amalgamations, uh, and from losses brought forward and other reliefs like that. Not our R&D, the big ones. And that's where they're paying themselves money, which is profit, but writing it off as a cost, okay? It'd be like me saying, oh, my ma came up with a brilliant idea uh, and uh, I have to pay her for that brilliant idea and then I claim that as a deduction off my income tax, right? Revenue would laugh me out, out of the room. But that's what these corporations are doing. They're writing their own tax bill and you know it, right? And the OECD know it. Thank you, that's why there's a reform process. Minister, what are we going to do to make sure they pay an effective rate? So I think in your effort to preempt what I was going to say, we had a bit of a hallelujah moment there, because I think you just said you value the jobs that are here, which I think is the first time, Deputy, in our years of debating this, that I've heard you say that. So I think we've had a little bit of a breakthrough in this debate between you and me. And, 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 it's great, it's, it's great this has all been recorded, uh, and if you do value them, uh, surely you can then understand uh, why that, uh, we want them in our own country and we need to have a tax code that is competitive, which is why we've had this debate regarding the low rate. And while we now agree on something regarding these value jobs being valued, where we continue to disagree is you see, for example, uh, the write-down of an expense as tax avoidance, uh, whereas I see the write-down of an expense against your tax code as a tax policy recognising that there is cost involved in something that would ultimately generate a profit or an income, and that's recognised in how something is taxed. And that's the difference. But let's recognise what we've agreed on this evening.